Hi everyone, it's Webby. Welcome to another video. Um, today we're having a look at the 2023 Ford Everest uh, and in particular the Ambiente specification. This one sits at the very entry level in the Ford Everest lineup for 2023. So I'm going to show you all around the car, look at all the specification, the technology that this car's got, but we'll also talk about pricing options, servicing cost, warranty and everything you need to know about the Everest Ambiente. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below, just in case I miss anything. Uh, but with all said and done, let's get started having a look around this Everest Ambiente. Right, so first up, there's two versions of the Ambiente that you can get. One is the rear wheel drive, so two wheel drive version, but then you can also get the 4x4. They both come with the same 2 litre bi turbo diesel engine. Uh, that gives you 154 kilowatt and 500 newton metres of torque. Uh, both run through a 10-speed automatic gearbox. Um, the rear-wheel drive version is the 4x2, uh, and obviously 4x4 is the four-wheel drive version. There's very little difference between the two, literally other than that, um, apart from one of the option packages that you can add on um, when you build your car from factory. Now, in terms of pricing for this car, uh, 2022 models are 52,990 plus on roads for the 4x2 model, and 57,990 for the 4x4 model. 2023 specifications increased by $300 for both models. Um, so if you're getting one of these cars after probably end of April 2023, it'll be a 2023 model, uh, and obviously then a slightly higher price. But starting off at the front, um, now I remember when the first version of the Everest came out, and when you looked at the Ambiente, it really was a stripped out base model. You didn't get such niceties as things like uh, the side steps down the side of the car, the keyless entry, the push button start. It really was as basic as you possibly get. But now with this new model, Ford have actually given you a really good base specification to start with, meaning that you've only got to sort of go up if you want things like leather interior or an electric tailgate. Um, so if you can sort of do without those things, the Ambiente is actually a really good starting point. So for example, you get things like the LED headlights, with these C-shaped Dayton running lamps, which you see on things like top of the range um, sort of models in the Ranger lineup. Um, again, you never used to get that in the previous model. It was always on the higher spec grades where you got the LED headlights. So it's really nice to see that you actually get them on the base model. We've also got things like the front parking sensors, LED fog lights, uh, the sensor just un under the number plate holder, uh, which is for the adaptive cruise control, which is standard on this model. Um, so as you can see, it's starting to get bits and pieces that you kind of expect from some mid-range models, uh, which is actually really good. Now coming around to the side, uh, we've got 17-inch alloy wheels as standard. Um, so this particular car is a 4x2. If you have the four-wheel drive option, there is an option from factory uh, that will give you 18-inch alloy wheels and all-terrain tyres. Um, you can't obviously get that on the 4x2 because Ford deemed that you don't need all-terrain tyres. Uh, anyway, quite nice to see some 17-inch alloys. Uh, bi turbo badge in there. Door handles and door mirror caps are always body coloured. Um, again, previous generation, they had black handles um, at the very beginning of when they came out. Um, so nice to see it doesn't look like a base model from the outside. Um, side steps, as I mentioned a minute ago, are standard as well, which is really nice. Uh, we've also got keyless entry and push button start. Uh, so again, entry level car getting things that in previous generation you'd find on sort of mid or top spec models. Uh, so that's really nice to see. The only thing you probably miss out on down the side is things like privacy glass. Uh, again, you have to go to the next model up to get something like that. Um, but most people are gonna get their windows tinted anyway, because even if you had privacy glass, the front windows are always clear anyway, so you need to do something. Um, so basically just means you've got to do the whole lot rather than just the front ones. Uh, nice to see we get roof rails here in black as well, so if you do need to tie anything to the roof, uh, it's handy to have the roof rails. Um, so as an overall package, um, looking around some of the outside bits and pieces, it's actually really good. So coming around now to the back of this Everest Ambiente, uh, we get things like LED tail lights as standard, which is nice to see as well. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, the tailgate is manual on this model, uh, it's only electric on all the models above. Uh, we have got the factory fitted tow bar on this car, uh, so it's got the tow pack. Um, so that gives you the tow bar and also the factory fitted electric brakes, uh, which is a $1,700 option, whether you've got the 4x2 or the 4x4 model, it's the same cost. Um, we have got the, the optional third row seats in this car as well, uh, which is a $950 option. 
So if you actually want an Everest with five seats, the Ambiente is the only specification that will actually give that to you. Um, the benefit of that is that the, the load floor is flatter if you've got the five seat version, because when you've got the seven seat version, there's a slight incline uh, because obviously where the seats fold down. Uh, so under here, we've actually got a little bit of storage as well. Uh, so for example, you can keep the tongue in there for your tow bar. Uh, you've also got your toolkit in here as well. Uh, and there's a little rubber stopper there, which reveals the bolt to actually unwind the spare wheel, which is underneath the car. Then we've got the two rear seats to make this a seven seater. Uh, they've both got the tether points on the back. So if you're gonna put a child seat in the back, uh, obviously helps to keep that secure. To pull the seat up, you just literally grab that cord and then that locks the seat into place, so that's nice and secure. And then to release it, you just lift that lever and it drops back down to then create this massive boot space for you. Uh, we also find we've got some tie down points here at the back uh, and also around the sides of the car as well. Uh, there's an interior light there. We've got a 12 volt socket over here as well. Uh, so you've got some power outlets as well. Uh, and for rear passengers, we've got a bit of storage and also some cup holders. Um, so rear passengers are actually quite well catered for. Uh, in the ceiling, there's also air vents as well, because the air conditioning is in all three rows, and the last two rows, the vents are up in the ceiling. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually go inside the car and show you the interior, uh, all the technology that's on this car, and some of the features as well. If you are enjoying the video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, and also hit that notification bell to find out every time a new car review comes live. If you've got any questions about this car, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below for me, and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. So now let's have a look at the inside of this Everest Ambiente uh, and see what's inside. All right, so coming to the inside then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got keyless entry, which is nice. Uh, interior, as I mentioned also earlier, is cloth as opposed to leather, um, but the seats are actually really, really comfortable. You get a nice bit of support here down the bolsters uh, and also up the sort of rib cage area. Uh, for the front passenger. Uh, we've got a height adjuster there. We've also got a lumbar support there as well, which is nice to see. Um, just a normal sort of windows and mirror switches up there. Uh, the mirrors do actually fold in when you lock your car, by the way. Um, so there's the sort of general dashboard area. It looks very similar to other models in the Everest lineup, um, but I'll show you some of the unique features to the Ambiente. Uh, so let's jump inside. Starting off just down from the right hand side, of the steering wheel. Uh, so we've got the light switches here. So you've got automatic headlights on, on the Ambiente, uh, front and rear fog lights. Uh, we've got the buttons there to adjust the brightness of the dashboard lights. Uh, that little wheel there gives you headlamp adjustment. So if you've got a big heavy load in the back of your car uh, and your headlights point towards the sky, you can actually adjust them back down, which is pretty cool. Just above that, we've got a cup holder. So it just pops out. Uh, it does a uh, adjust as well so you can put different size sort of cups in there uh, so whether that's a hot or a cold drink you can stick that in there and then just to the right we've got the push button start so this is the view ahead uh, from the driver's seat uh, steering wheel isn't leather that's probably one downside I would say uh, if I could find any for this car um, it's just a plastic steering wheel uh, it's fairly well textured so it's got a little bit of grip there which is quite nice um, if you want leather, you do have to go to the Trend model. Uh, over on this side of the steering wheel, we've got the adaptive cruise control, uh, volume for your radio, and the voice control buttons as well. Um, so they're pretty easy to set up. Uh, if you've got your normal sort of on and off, you can set the speed by pushing that little button up or down. Uh, if you press it in, that's your cancel or resume button. Uh, that one there can adjust the gap for your adaptive cruise control. Uh, that one there can turn off your lane keeping aid. Uh, then as I said, up and down for volume and voice control. If we come to the right hand side of the steering wheel, uh, these buttons here will actually operate the screen there in front of the driver. Um, so the up and down arrow there can change what you actually see on the display. That button there will take you into the menus. That is like a back button to go to your previous screen. Uh, then you've got your track selection for you know, music from like a playlist on Spotify or Apple Music or something like that. Uh, or preset radio stations, and then a button there to uh, answer or end phone call. So this is the display in front of the driver then. It's actually exactly the same as you get on the Everest Trend, but also the same as you get on things like a Ranger Wildtrak as well. Um, so they've used this display in quite a few different models. 
it's really easy to read even as you're driving uh, so over to the left hand side there you've got your temperature gauge for the engine uh, then you've got the rev counter uh, total mileage for the car in the middle and obviously outside temperature as you can see pretty warm today uh, in the center we've got the uh, obviously digital speedo and then this one that goes all the way around that's also a speedo as well and as you faster you go a green line sort of goes further around the circle to uh, obviously show you you're going quicker uh, at the very top you've got a compass uh, down the very bottom it tells you what gear you're in and then that section just there is for your lane keeping aid so if you were to switch that off by pressing the button that I showed you a minute ago on the steering wheel then obviously that little graphic just disappears from the uh, bottom of the screen and then we just press it again to turn it on uh, then we've got the little symbol to tell us that the stop start system is activated uh, the range in the tank uh, and then this gauge here is the oil temperature gauge uh, and then you've got your fuel gauge over there so it's pretty standard stuff um, and the buttons on the steering wheel uh, did mention that you could operate some of the functions on that screen so if you press this button here that actually brings up the menus for you so this is where you can just go in to adjust certain features of the car um, so you can look at your vehicle maintenance so if we go into that one for example that can tell you what your oil life is like your add blue because all the Everest range use the add blue um, so it will tell you how much add blue you've got so this is pretty full as you can see press the little back arrow that will take us back to there and if we keep pressing that back arrow it brings us back to the main menu then you can look at other things if you wanted to look at your fuel consumption figures for example you can go into that one there uh, you've got two trips you've got fuel economy so if we just went in to trip number one you can actually see that over the course of the life of this vehicle in the last 1700 k's almost uh, it's actually averaged 9.2 litres per hundred um, so that's actually not too bad for a car of this size uh, that's pretty decent um, so yeah that's where you're going to find things like your trip computer if you want to get rid of that you just press the back button and it will just show you a full screen display there in front of the driver now coming over to the left hand side uh, keen eyed people might have spotted I've changed car uh, there's the white car that I was filming a minute ago I've actually jumped inside this uh, it's an exact replica uh, it's just diff different colour uh, this one's actually been through the workshop, so everything's working inside in terms of the electronics. Uh, so as I said, this is the SYNC 4 infotainment screen. It's got built-in sat-nav, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay, it's got wireless Android Auto. Um, it's the only one in the range which gets the 10.1 inch screen. Every other model gets the 12 inch screen, but it's got the same functionality. So you've got your radio, as you can see there. Then at the bottom, we've got some of the controls uh, for the dual zone climate control. Um, so that's again, that's really, really easy to use. Uh, on your sat nav screen, you can see there, you can got your, like I say, your wireless car play, your Android Auto, your radio, your nav, electronic owner's manual, which is actually a really cool thing to have. Um, I've actually done a separate video on this uh, system. So if you want to watch that video, I'll actually put a link in the top right hand corner of the screen, uh, which goes for all the functions and how everything works uh, on the SYNC 4 system. Uh, so then if we look further down, we've then got the um, sort of physical controls for your climate control. So you've got temperatures either side. Um, you've got the volume and on and off button there for your radio. Manual fan speed, fast, um, obviously demis for your front windscreen, uh, maximum air conditioning, recirculation, and then your hazard warning lights. Uh, coming further down, uh, on the left hand side just under there, you've got the wireless charging pad. So even on a base model, you've got a wireless charging pad for your mobile phone. We've then got two USB charging points. So at the bottom, you've got the USB-A, and then at the top, you've got the faster USB-C, uh, and then you've got a little bit of storage there as well. Uh, also a little bit of storage there uh, with the infamous little chip symbol down there uh, that you've probably read about on various different sort of Facebook groups or someone might have told you about. So from there then, uh, we've got the traditional gear stick. So when you've got the two-wheel drive version of the Everest Ambiente, you get this traditional gear stick, where when you get the four-wheel drive model, it's got the shorter little stubby gear selector, the electronic shifter, um, that you would also see in things like the Rain, um, Everest Sport and Everest Platinum. Um, you've got your normal sort of gear selections down there. On the side of the gear stick, you see that plus and minus button. And what that enables you to do is, let's just pop the car in drive for a second. Uh, and then on the screen, when I press those plus and minus buttons, 
it actually tells you how many gears you're using. So if you were towing, for example, wanted to use a select amount of gears, there you go, that would restrict it to six gears or seven gears or eight gears, or basically however many you want to use. Then coming back down here, let's pop that back in the park, uh, electronic handbrake, um, literally you'd pull that up to turn that on, that's pretty straightforward, uh, and then you just touch the accelerator to turn it off. Then the button's behind here, so we've got the button there to turn off the auto stop start. That one will turn off your parking sensors. That one will turn off your electronic stability control and traction control. Uh, and then we've got the button there that will cycle through the drive modes. So with the drive modes, uh, let me just bring that into life for you. So then you've got a choice of four, so you've got normal. And even when you press it, it changes normal. You've got economy. Then you've got a specific mode for towing. So the tow mode would then adjust things like throttle response. It will um, adjust things like your traction control, stability control, because it knows you're towing something. Uh, and that's a really, really good thing to have. Uh, and then the last one you've got there uh, is the slippery mode. So if you're gonna be doing, you know, if it's been raining or the roads are a bit greasy, or if you're going down um, you know, maybe a dirt road, you might sort of engage that even in a two wheel drive car. Uh, and then after that, you just go straight back to normal. So that's your drive mains. We've also got a bit more storage. We've got a couple of cup holders here. This is where the drive mode selector and the forward drive selector would be in the forward drive model. So we've just got a little uh, sort of I don't know, a coin tray or something, I guess you could use that for. Uh, then you've got the armrest that opens up. We've got a nice bit of, big bit of space under there. This little tray pops out. Uh, you've also got another 12 volt socket under there as well, which is quite handy to have. It would probably be quite nice if they put some USBs in there, in fact, but never mind. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the interior is quite nice. And so I do like these seats, they're very comfortable. Um, it's not fancy in here, it's not flash, it's just basic, um, as much as you need, basically. You do get a second glove box there at the top. You've got, obviously, the normal glove box down there at the bottom. And then just a little storage shelf there in the middle, which is quite handy. As I said earlier, this car has got uh, the factory fitted tow pack. Uh, so these buttons here are the electronic brake controller that's fitted from factory. Uh, so you don't have to go drilling holes in your dash and installing a red arc system. The benefit of having the factory fitted system is if we come to the display here uh, and then we go into towing. So you have to add your trailer here if you're going to add a caravan or a boat or something like that. Uh, and then what it will do is once you've actually added your trailer details in there, so you put in your length and the width of the trailer, uh, it will then adjust the blind spot monitor to work in conjunction with how long your trailer is. But it can also do th things like um, check the lights on your trailer as well. So you just press that button, it will check all the globes on your trailer, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so there's another sort of benefit there that you get on the base model that you'd normally expect to, uh, to find on sort of higher end models. Getting in and out is quite handy as well because you've got these grab handles um, in the front and also for the middle rows, which we'll have a look when we get in the back in a second. So it's quite easy to just put your foot on the step, grab the handles, and then just swing yourself in. Adjust your seats where you want it to be. On the left hand side, just under the steering wheel, there's a lever there to adjust the steering wheel. And now you can actually adjust the steering wheel for reach and also height as well, uh, which again is a new thing because the previous generation only had height adjust. Um, so even on this base model, we've got the reach adjust as well, which is really nice. So this is my driving position all set up for me. Uh, I've got a great view of the road ahead. Uh, also the side window as well is a really decent size. And so are the door mirrors, they're a really good sized door mirror. Um, obviously you've got the blind spot monitor to build into that as well, which is handy. Um, but overall, you've got really good visibility. You can just about see the edges of the bonnet because that bonnet is a lot squarer than the previous generation Everest. Um, so yeah, you can just about sort of see where the front of the car is. Um, so that's now my position set up. Let's actually have a look in the back, uh, look at some of the features and how much space we've got. So again, grab handles here for the middle row, uh, foot up on the step, and then just swing yourself in again. 
Uh, you'll notice how wide the doors open as well, which actually makes it really handy for elderly people getting in, uh, or if you've got a baby seat here and actually sort of getting your child to put into the baby seat. Uh, so it's nice that the doors open nice and wide. Uh, in terms of leg space, acres and acres of leg space, uh, you can almost just about fit your feet under the driver's seat. Um, if the driver's seat came up a little bit, you'd be able to stretch your legs out even further, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, you've got a little storage pocket on the back uh, of the two front seats as well. There's a fan control uh, in the middle there, plus also another 12 volt socket. The vents actually come out the ceiling, uh, which is quite handy, because it means it actually cools the back of the car down quicker than if the air vents were down there in the middle. Um, you can also adjust them as well, so you can twist them either towards your face or away from you, so they're not just constantly coming at you um, in your face. The middle row of seats actually slide backwards and forwards as well. Uh, so that enables you to either increase the amount of boot space you've got if you're carrying some larger items, or if you're gonna have people sat in the back, it gives them more room to put their feet down. So there's a lever just underneath, so you can literally just slide that forward as much or as little as you want. Uh, and then say creates more space in the back. You've obviously got the obligatory fold down centre armrest. Uh, a couple of cup holders pop out there in the middle, which is quite handy. If you are going to be putting baby seats in the back, uh, the outer two seats have also got the isofix mounting points as well. Uh, all three seats in the middle row have got tether points on the backs, uh, and the two seats, or the optional two seats in the back, have also got tether points as well. Uh, it's a very, very practical family car. Now, if you want to gain access to the rear, so you come from the uh, passenger side, there's a little lever just up here on top of the seat. So you lift that lever, then it will tilt the seat and also slide at the same time. So there's actually a nice big gap. Uh, just obviously you mind yourself on the seat belt. Uh, just a nice big gap to sort of climb into the back of the car uh, for the rear passengers there. Uh, so as you can see, fairly decent amount of rear space in there. Um, for small children or small adults, uh, that's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. So the last thing we need to do now is just take the Everest Ambiente out for a drive. Um, we're gonna be using this gray one. This is a demonstrator at my work. Uh, the white one was just uh, an unregistered car, so we can't obviously drive that one. Um, so yeah, we'll take this one out on the road. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the running costs and bits and pieces like that as well. Um, so yeah, let's go and have a drive. So first impressions now we've hit the road then. Um, Nice comfortable ride, the steering is well weighted, you've got great visibility out of all the windows of the car. It's quiet, it's smooth, uh, the engine has definitely got enough punch to get you in and out of any situation uh, that you need to. So it's no longer a bad thing to buy a base model anymore. You don't have to go and buy a middle or a top of the range to get something with decent spec or that drives nicely or has got enough power from the engine. This base model does a really, really good job without spending an absolute fortune. Getting up to speed to join the freeway is an absolute doddle. You can be hitting 100 before you even get onto the freeway itself. It's that easy. So the four cylinder is obviously not quite as quiet or smooth as the V6 that you get in the Sport and the Platinum models, but then you're saving a lot of money. So you've got to sort of look at that side of things as well. If you literally just want a big sized family car for five people or seven people then this really does fit the bill it does everything you need to do without any sort of the fancy bits you've got all the safety stuff you'll ever need autonomous braking lane keeping blind spot monitor rear cross traffic alert rear emergency braking nine airbags yeah what more do you really need Servicing, like all the other Ford cars, is every 12 months for every 15,000 kilometres. Cap price servicing is available at 330 for each of the first four services, so basically up to 60,000 k's. Roadside assist is standard as well, 12 months automatically with the car. Uh, that gets renewed every time you go to a Ford dealership for servicing, uh, up to seven years or 105,000 kilometres. With the exception of the cloth seats and not having a leather steering wheel, you really wouldn't know that you're in a base model here, to be fair. You've still got the digital dash, you've still got the decent uh, infotainment system with sat-nav and wireless Apple CarPlay, etc. So you don't really miss out on that front either. You just save a lot of money because you don't want all the fancy bits. 
you don't get too much road noise or tyre noise coming through to the cabin either, which is quite nice. So this standard car is sitting on the 17 inch wheels, but I don't think you'd get much more on the four wheel drive model if you had the 18 inch wheels and all terrain tyres. So that's the brand new Ford Everest Ambiente. I hope you've learned everything you need to know about this new model, but if you haven't, leave some questions and comments below for me and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to like the video, share with your friends, also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. So that just leaves me to say thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.